Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Heel Toe Corner Club. I'm your host, Marcus DiSabella, owner of Heel Toe Automotive, and I'm making this podcast to support you and your automotive shopping adventures. I uh, have been selling Honda and Acura parts online for more than 20 years, Honda and Acura parts in general for probably 25. And in that time, I've had a lot of chances to sell parts to all different kinds of people, install parts on different kinds of mostly Hondas and Acuras. I've uh, been a technician apprentice, so I've got some mechanical background. But for the most part, I'm just here to help people zero in on their car parts purchasing and to understand a little bit of the nuances about the parts that they're shopping for and buying to get the most out of their automotive enthusiast experience. And today I wanted to talk about something of another myth. I made a podcast about brake rotor warping myth a while ago, and I did get some support from that. Of course, some people are going to push back, but hey, you know what? That's uh, just the name of the game when you're talking about things that are not necessarily the conventional idea. And if you haven't heard that podcast and you're not sure what I'm talking about, it was only a few weeks ago. So uh, check out the brake rotor warping myth and um, learn something about uh, brake pads and brake rotors and where that shaking comes from. Today, it's something a little bit more simple, uh, maybe just as funky sounding. uh, And that is the myth that coil springs will settle after a while. Um, after you install them on your car. So like you put lowering springs on, they're rated to lower at a certain rate. Everybody seems to kind of have this uh, acceptance that their individual lowering rate may vary slightly. That's a, a totally fine assumption that people are willing to live with. But one thing that does seem to prevail uh on the internet at least, where I see people talking about this sort of thing, is that you're going to put lowering springs in the car, and then they're going to settle after, I don't know, a few weeks or a few months or something like that. And so when you get the final height, you need to make sure that uh, you get an alignment done on the car. And so what this sometimes does is it causes people to wait. They'll put the springs on, drive around for a little while, maybe the alignment sort of leaves their mind, and before you know it, their tires are completely worn out because they never got an alignment. How that happens is a little bit of a different topic that I will cover later. But what the most important thing I think to take away from this particular episode is that the springs don't settle. Uh, they, at least they shouldn't. If you get good quality springs, Tane, Swift, Eibach, H&R, you know, there, there are good spring manufacturers. And then there's the cheap, cheap junk on eBay or whatever. If you get good springs... Quality springs will not droop over time or sag, right? The coils can collapse and that will cause the car to change height. But that is not what I think people are thinking of when they think of settling. I think they think that the spring is going to go in the car and the weight of the car comes down. And as that weight sort of settles into the springs, they'll kind of come into a natural place where they've kind of like deformed a little bit. And now you're at the height where the car is going to be at. Quality springs won't do that. You'll put the springs in the car, drive down the road, and park it, take a look. That's where your car should stay for the duration of your time with those springs. Uh, Way down the line, years, decades, possibly later, if uh, the springs have gotten compromised or if you've abused the car or, or, you know, whatever. At some point, one of the coils may fail. They can get rusty. They can crack. uh, They can break. Things like that. But... Um, as far as immediately installing the springs on the car, you shouldn't see them settle after, you know, two weeks go by. What you will notice is that once you put the springs on the car and you put the car back on the ground, it's at whatever height that it's at. And it will be lower than when you put the springs in initially. But you haven't yet seen the car at the final height with those springs on until you've rolled the car back and forth, you know, at least probably 20, 30 feet back and forth. And the reason for that is this. When you lift the car up off the ground, the wheels droop down. And what you may or may not realize is that the wheels don't come straight down. They kind of droop down. They'll kind of positive camber a little bit as the suspension articulates underneath the car. The, they'll tow and camber in a weird way as the suspension reaches full droop. 
you don't necessarily see the way the suspension looks when the car is on the ground because it's sitting in its neutral position with the tires where they want to be. The suspension arms and bushings are holding the wheel in the angle that they're set to hold the wheel to. There's probably zero or a little bit of negative camber all the way around. Just This is necessary for uh, just natural handling of the car, even on a factory height car. They're going to have a little bit of camber. The toe should be pretty much straight forward. Um, you know, that may be tuned to a different degree depending on the type of car that it is. But ultimately, when the car is sitting on the ground, the wheels aren't straight up and down. And when you lift the car up off the ground, they're not straight up and down, but they move to a different location. So when you lift the car up off the ground, pull the factory springs out, put the lowering springs in, and then put the car back on the ground, the first thing that touches the ground when you lower the car is the tires. Now, I shouldn't have to explain this, but I'll just go step by step that the tires are grippy, right? They're, it's rubber. And when they hit the pavement, whether it's wet or not, um, they will want to kind of stick to the ground. So when you put the car down all the way, let's say you take your jack or the lift arms, fall away from the chassis, the car is sitting on the ground, being held up by the springs um, on the tires, but the tires haven't had a chance to kind of like relax themselves into that natural place where they would be sitting with the car with no weight on it. The effect that this has is that the suspension can't relax into its natural place because the tires are holding the suspension in a certain spot. Once you roll the car, right, then then the tires are able to sort of like wander themselves or walk themselves into the natural position that they're going to be in, depending on how the control arms and the bushings and the alignment settings have been set, which at this point haven't been changed from when you know, you took the springs out in the first place. So in other words, you've got to roll the car to relax the tires to take them out of like the height situation because the car can't drop all the way down unless the wheels can kind of like spread apart and relax themselves into a natural place. All you have to do is drive the car backwards out of your, you know, bay or wherever you just worked on the car, turn the steering wheel, you know, a few degrees each way and drive it back forward again and the tires have now relaxed themselves into their natural position the car has been allowed to settle more into its natural height and so now you're going to see where the springs have netted your lowering to it shouldn't get any lower after that so like you know driving the car around the block and bringing it back you'll notice that the car has quote unquote settled um and I think the conventional wisdom that people have is like, oh, well, okay, I drove it around, settled a little bit. Let me drive it around a little more, make sure it's done settling, and then I can get my alignment. Well, you know, it, it, it's fair sound logic, but in reality, you got to the settled height, you know, 20 feet down the road. It, it really doesn't require continual driving to get the car set to a height where it's naturally going to be at. Uh, I installed a lot of springs. I actually cut my teeth installing springs at the dealership way back in the day. I think this was around 1998, something like that. Um, we would throw springs, dampers, whatever in the car. I'd drive it off my rack, drive it around the block just to make sure I didn't have any noises or any problems, and plop it right up onto the alignment rack, align the car, and then we'd be done. There's no reason or need to wait any longer than that to adjust the alignment on the car. So there you have it. The springs really don't settle. When you put the springs in the car, um, just like I said, driving around the block, make sure that everything uh, was netted out just fine. You don't have any noises or, or, or funkiness of any kind in terms of uh, you know, sound or handling dynamics should be relatively normal even though the alignment is off. Go get your alignment. Don't wait. You know, a, a week later, find anything past that you're going to start getting into some serious tire wear issues that are going to catapult you into buying new tires and it, nobody really wants to make these jobs more expensive than they need to be so so there you go springs don't settle over time buy quality springs throw them in drive the car evaluate get an alignment and enjoy the drive Thanks a lot for listening. I hope that this was uh, at least somewhat informative for some of you. 
Uh, a lot of folks who are more experienced in this probably already know, so it may be a little bit old pat, but uh, if you are one of the listeners that are a little new to the game, uh, just kind of filter out some of what you see online and think, well, you know, I'm, I'm hearing all these people say that I need to let my car settle, and honestly, you don't. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your tires. Have a fantastic day. Thank you for listening. Heel Toe is in your corner. See you next time.